I am Vipruti Parekh and today we are going to discuss regarding the economic environments. What are the economic environments and what are the factors affecting the economic environment? The factors as the nature and level of development of the economy, economic resources, size of the economy, economic system and economic policies, economic conditions, trends in the GNP growth rate and per capita income, nature of and trends in foreign trade, domestic supply and demand conditions are all factors relevant to business. The important economic factors are described as the nature of the economy. The general level of development of the economy has lot of implications for business. It has significant bearing on the nature and size demand, government policies affecting business, etc. Countries and even different regions within a country show great difference in the level and pattern of economic development. A widely used method of classification of the economies is on the basis of the per capita income. Accordingly, countries are broadly classified as low income, middle income and high income economies. The low income economies are economies with very low level of per capita income that is less than $825. High income economies are countries with very rich income per capita that is more than $10,066. The World Bank has recently replaced the term GNP that is the Gross National Product with GNI which means the Gross National Income. Both mean the same thing. The middle income economies are those with per capita income between the low level economies and the high level economies. It should be considered that the middle income economies are also divided in two different parts that is the upper middle income economy and the lower middle income economy. The low income economies are sometimes referred as the third world. The high income and middle income economies representing the first and the second worlds itself respectively. Difference in the income levels between countries is not a true reflection of the purchasing powers or living standards of people. For example, international comparisons of GNP and per capita income in a nominal currency unit do not reflect a realistic picture between the purchasing power of the national currency. Further, exchange rate changes would give a misleading picture of the economic position of the country when the income is converted into dollars from the national currency. For instance, if the national currency is depreciated against the dollar at a higher rate, higher than the GNP growth rate, when the GNP is converted into dollars, it will show a decline even though the GNP was actually increased in terms of the national currency. Next are the developing and developed economies or countries is often used classification of different countries. Low income and middle income economies are developing economies. The developed economies as a group are sometimes referred to as North. As they say, with some exceptions like Australia and New Zealand are in the Northern Hemisphere and the developing economies are referred to as South as most of them are in the southern hemisphere. The use of the terms developed and developing though convenient is not however intended to imply that all economies in the group of developing are experiencing similar development or that other economies have reached a preferred or final stage of development. Classification by income does not necessarily reflect development status. In the group of high income economies, the industrial economies are developed economies. 
all the oil exporters are not developed economies for example kuwait and uae though high income economies are regarded as developing economies beside income some other criteria such as the sectoral distribution of the income and employment generation social development indicators etc are applied to consider whether an economy is a developed or developing one besides the income and social dimension there are a number of common characteristics of developed economies they are characterized by widespread use of modern and sophisticated technology continuous innovations fast diffusion of the new ideas and technologies low share of the primary sector mainly agriculture and dominance of the territory that is a service sector and secondly that is a manufacturing sector in the income and employment generation market friendly economy policies comparatively open trade and investment policies democratic rights competition and consumer choice etc sometimes the term less developed economies and more developed economies are used to refer to the developing and developed countries the use of the term underdeveloped to refer to the developing countries is also common for the developing economies the inequality in the distribution of income is very high and as a result a large proportion of the population lives in object poverty although many countries have achieved considerable reduction in poverty the incidences of poverty is very high in other countries they are generally characterized by high birth and population growth rates death rates are also higher than in developed countries in the group of developed as well as developing countries is a heterogeneous mixture because of the large number the developing countries exhibit a very diverse spectrum within the category of low income economies for example sometimes a special category by name least developed economies is identified most of the least developed economies suffer from one or more of the following constraints a very low gnp per capita land locked remote insularity desertification and exposure to natural disasters there are about 50 least developed countries including bangladesh bhutan nepal maldives mali uganda myanmar sudan zimbabwe zambia and yemen there are on the other hand developing economies which have been experiences rapid industrialization such as hong kong south korea singapore and taiwan they are also considered as the asian tigers they are sometimes referred to as newly industrializing economies some publications use the term newly industrialized to refer to them now people's republic of china is regarded as a newly industrializing economy the newly industrializing economies show a very high growth rate over a long period of the economy and per capita income they have also been presenting very impressive export performances those economies which are in the transaction from the centralized economic system to the market economy are referred to as transition economies the transition economies thus are the former communist or socialist economies and east european countries which are undergoing an economic system transition they also represent a transition from authoritarianism to democracy as indicated earlier income is not the only criteria to consider a country as developed there is indeed some important 
difference between economic growth and development while the international gap that is the economic disparity between the developed and developing countries has been narrowing in several areas it has been widening in several others this can be considered with the help of region states it is very common to consider a nation as a economic unit there may however be vast differences in the economic conditions and other factors relevant to business between the different region of a single country itself particularly if the country is geographically very vast and culturally very diverse for example different regions of india show significant diversity even different parts of the same state are dissimilar in several respect when the different regions of a national economy show great diversity it may not be appropriate to regard it as a single economic unit omen well known japanese management expert and renowned author argues that nation states are no longer meaningful units to think about economic activity in a borderless world they combine things at the wrong level of aggregation omei points out that in a borderless economy the units that do make sense are region states that is geographical units which are natural economic zones they may or may not fall within the boundaries of a particular nation the concept of region states which Omei suggested in his The Borderless World has been elaborated in the end of the nations, the rise of regional economies. He points out that the economies of the nation states are not monolithic. In the real world, there is no such thing as an average Italy or France or Japan or United States. For managers, such statistics are monolithic. useless statistical aberrations and misleading abstractions at that in other words in the borderless world the boundaries that make sense exactly at the bottom are the natural business units the sufficient correctly sized and scaled aggregations of people and activities through which to tap into the economy one way to consider this is to observe the flow of what he calls the four i's that is the investment industry information technology and the last one that is the individual consumers investment is no longer geographically constrained now whenever you sit in the world if the opportunity is attractive the money will come in for example in nowadays we can consider the level of investment that is coming in the indian state due to various visits of their prime minister mr narendra modi in different countries industry is also far more global in orientation than it was a decade ago the strategies of modern mncs are no longer shaped and conditioned by reasons of the state but rather by the desire and the need to serve attractive markets wherever they exist and to tap attractive pool of resources wherever they sit the moment of both investment and industry has been greatly facilitated by information technology which now makes it possible for the company to operate in various parts of the world without having to build up an entire business system in each of the countries where it has presence finally individual consumers have also become more global in orientation with better information about lifestyles around the globe they are much less likely to want to buy and much less conditioned by government injunctions to buy 
from any particular source merely because of their national associations consumers increasingly want the best and the cheapest products no matter where they come from ome suggests that taken together the mobility of these four eyes makes it possible for viable economic units in any part of the world to pull in whatever is needed for development they need not look for the assistance only to pools of resources close to home they can use these resources from anywhere around the globe the next is the international economic gaps almost all important parameters of development and welfare indicate a yawning gap between the developed and the developing economies there is general feeling that the present international economic order which is biased against the developing economy is one of the important reasons for it there has therefore been a growing demand of a new economic order that will help remedy this problem although the developing economies on the whole have been faster than the developed ones there exists wide gaps between these two categories of countries in many respects while the international economic gap that is the economic disparity between the developed and developing countries has been narrowing in several areas it has been widening in several others at the same time the widening or the persistence of the international economic gap has been caused by such factors as the difference in growth rates unequal excess population explosion in developing countries and the negligence by the developed countries of the humanitarian needs of the developing countries etc as we can see the shares of different categories of economies we can see that the economic groups are divided into four main parts that is the high middle low income low and middle income at the same time from an indian perspective it is very clear that the indian economy is falling in somewhere in between the low income and the high income that is in the middle income gap we are having a gnp of the low income economies where the purchasing power parity is also similar to that the human development reports brought out by the undp provides a number of indicators of the growing disparity what are these indicators though we can consider this as an obsolete data but as per the 1990s the fifth of the world's people living in the highest income countries had around about 86% of the world gdp the bottom fifth just 1% 82% of the world export markets the bottom fifth just 1% 68% percent of the foreign direct investment again for the bottom fifth it was just 1 percent 74 percent of the world telephone lines today's basic means of communication the bottom fifth just 1.5 percent so here that's all for today's part in part two of economic environments will be covering the structure of the economy economic policies economic conditions economic environments and business till then thank you from my side and keep watching edopedia world videos